Go really, let's yeah, really hear the air, like. Really? Hold on, I'll Good morning, everybody. Here I am sitting in my car outside of the coffee shop <laughs> because I'm actually on my way to take Shadow for a vet checkup. And I just thought, well, I'm a little bit early, so I'm stopping in for a coffee, which I haven't done in a while. They have such a good coffee here. Um, I had promised that I would do an extended version of the masterclass, so here it is. Hope you enjoy it. Hello. 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 So thank you for being here. Um, I've been doing voice lessons now for many years. I don't know if any, were any of you here for the last one? Yes. Okay. I was asked so much over the years to do lessons or master classes and we're always turning them down because I am actually self-taught and I thought, I can't teach anyone. I don't, I'm a, I would, it's like, I'm a phony. I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> Uh, but people kept asking and asking, and I did, when I first moved to New York in 1988, I thought, well, I'm in Manhattan now, I should be taking lessons, so I found myself a voice teacher. And I took a few lessons and I realized, you know, I don't really like the sound of her voice. <laughs> I thought, no, I really I don't want to do this, so I stopped. And then all the years later, when I finally did agree to start teaching, I realized, Anyone that's coming to me is coming to me because they get, I guess they like something that I do and they want maybe to incorporate a little of that into what they do. And that actually made me relax a little bit because obviously I know what I'm doing and <laughs> as I've been teaching, it's actually been an interesting thing because I just sang. I didn't, I wasn't ever analyzing my voice or anything like that. But as I was teaching and having to try to explain certain things, I, it then made me sort of look at what I was doing and actually start analyzing it a little bit. And it's been a very good thing for me because, you know, like everyone else, I'm aging. And your voice ages, your voice changes, and things that uh, I'm doing are actually benefiting me in a way as I go through changes in my life. Then say, I want you so, it's like I'm losing. You sound beautiful. You don't have to worry about that. Worry about your breathing. Okay, fine. Wait, don't don't wait though. <laughs> 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 you said you loved me. You just so do it again from the beginning. Both lines. You said you loved me. Exhale. Oh, no, no. exhale. <laughs> and then. Oh, were you just? But I did the breath. Now you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't give you my air. <laughs> is what, again, is the, all the different topics that apply to everybody, is natural pronunciation. Because I'm sure you heard as she was singing along, whenever there was a pronunciation that wasn't what you'd hear in a conversation, you kind of got popped out of the performance, right? So I'll give her her first note for people. People. And just start a cappella. I'm just going to be stopping and starting you. Now you can hang on to the piano a little bit and try to think about a little about your breathing you know, as you're doing it. People. Okay, right 
that. Now, how do you say the word people? People. People? People. Right. Not so much people. Okay. Right. But now, the reason you're doing that is because you're trying to elongate the O of people. Okay. But you don't want to do it with the jaw. That's a classical thing, actually, and it's also a choir thing. So if you sang a lot in choir, mm -hmm. <laughs> most of the time the choirs are not big enough then they want, you know, a thousand people in their choir in order to make the sound bigger. They all have, oh, you watch your chords, right? They're all mouthing the words at us like, <laughs> especially if you're in school and you're just little kids and they want this big sound, you know? So we, you start to think of singing as being, oh, we want space, but that's where the soft palate coming up and creating that. You want that to be going on in here, but you want natural in the front. So we want, for instance, an Evo, is up uh, inside and just a little bit in front to make it e. So e. It's not e. It's e ah uh, inside and e. So peep, people, people. You're still saying it in front the way you would, yeah, but inside you're thinking ah. Uh, okay. So you get a little more space. Okay. okay. So try that. People. Right. More natural, yeah. but still full. It's all heightened emotion. Every song has to be higher emotion than the most impassioned speaking that you can do you know it takes because it's energy and it's taking it to that next level especially in theater you know they're supposed to talk 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 and when they can't talk anymore that's when they're supposed to burst into music so it's taking it somewhere else and if we don't do that our singing sounds more dull than our speaking okay i'm going to sing you this song now <laughs> So just, just, just for fun, just uh, for shits and giggles. Okay. <laughs> so what kind of, what range would you normally do it in? Just I, I, I tend to be kind of low. Yeah, pick your natural so where it feels good. Just, okay. just start singing a code. We'll see where it sits. If you could read my mind, love. Okay, let's do it a smidge higher. If you could read my mind, love. What a tale my thoughts could tell. Now, do you feel like you just saw her? Yes. <laughs> the real her? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. I see that very naturally in you, that kind of music sits really nat organically in you, right? All right, so a lot of the, all the breathing things obviously apply, right? Have you ever been, anyone ever talked to you about how we actually breathe to sing? Yeah. yeah. Well, basically, uh, breathing should feel like it's coming from the bottom up, even though that's not technically possible. We sort of, it just kind of goes in all at once. But if you think about it being from the bottom up, you'll actually get more air in your lungs, right? So for all of us right now, we can just do this. Put your fingers on your diaphragm. So hard, fast, blow all your up. So how your diaphragm muscle gets hard on your mm -hmm. fingers, right? Now, as soon as no more air is coming out, immediately relax. Physically, just try to stick your stomach out and slowly inhale. Exhale is fast, inhale is slow, and while you're doing it, think of going this way. Don't think of lifting up, just think of going this way. So. And don't worry about sticking your stomach out, just stick it out. <laughs> yeah! Now, do it without breath, doing it that way. Breathe normal, just take a normal breath and do the same yell. Harder, right? Harder, but harder to hit the note. The process of sucking in that air has actually lifted up, it should have been lifting up your soft palate, but also everything, not just the soft palate. You know what the soft palate is? Mm -hmm. Right? If you feel your roof of your mouth going back, it becomes soft. We have the ability to lift that flap of skin, give ourselves more space to make sound. So you want to be pulled, but you don't want just that, because if you're just lifting that, this is what you sound like. Right? <laughs> you want everything. I kind of think of it envision it as like a thing slice going right through your head, right? This just lifts, it uses the muscles of your neck, it's using your core muscles, it's kind of pulling everything up and making it easier for you to hit high notes. All my life, I've been building walls around. So what you were responding to was A, the beauty of his voice, his phrasing, and the beauty of the melody. 
Okay? So now, what you need to work on then is to how to, when you're singing a lyric that, you know, is English, how do you bring you into that? Okay? <coughs> so, and the way you do it, you have to be feeling it. Now, we don't have to feel it all the time. Well, obviously, you know, you do it, I've sung some songs six billion times, and if I never sang them again, you know, it might be okay. But I have to, right? So I have to go out there. And there's times when I am in the emotion of the song because maybe something's happened in my life or in the, in the world that's put me there. But other times I just have to go out there and do it again. So how do I recreate it? Well, you recreate it by moving the muscles in the same way that they would be if you were actually feeling that emotion, and then that will then help you. And sometimes that will actually help and lead you into actually feeling those emotions, because the <coughs> also lives here, right? So, and you also have to be aware of what you're saying. And so that we, because we can only, as I say to the students all the time, we can only go where you go. And if you're not really aware of what you're saying and how it's making you feel, then we can't, right? Because every one of us has been reading people from the time we're old enough to understand our parents' voice, you know, and as we grow up, we grow up reading people. And even though you might be singing for 5,000 people, you're still, re you're still connecting individually one-on-one. -on -one. Those people are still reading you the same way. So you have to communicate with them no differently than you would in, you know, just talking to somebody, right? And, and that's kind of the difference. And also, when we sing a lyric, when, just like I'm doing now, I know basically what I'm about to say, but not exactly. So you see my thought process. You have to, we have to see that while you sing. Now think about what the very first emotion is. There in your mind already, right? Yeah, okay, gotcha. but, you know, this, is, this is a learned movement, right? It's not coming because you're feeling it. And we all, a lot of performers do that, but that's also very obvious to an audience. And it's a learned movement or something you've rehearsed and doing it. Not, not like Joe Cocker, who can't help himself. Doing <laughs> <laughs> it because he's just so emotional. But that means more. It's almost better to do nothing <clears throat> until the moment you feel it. You're doing it because you're feeling something. All my life. Now think about the word life. All, all my life. Yes, each word has its own value. Life is the most important word in that line, right? So that's what you're aiming for. I've been building walls okay. around me. Me is the next one, right? All right? And walls and me. So you have to aim for those moments and really put that extra little feeling out. Never knowing what could be, what was there inside of me? What was, what? What was there <laughs> inside <laughs> of me? <laughs> What was there inside? No, no, that's Joe. Just stop. Push me. What was from there here. inside? But the power should come from here, not What here. was there inside yeah. of me? Yeah, exactly. I never let those feelings in. Yes. Then upon a summer's night. What? You, uh, what? what? A night? <laughs> then upon a summer's <laughs> night. No, that's England. And upon a summer's night. Not, not wide, but like your right idea, but don't think wide, think lifted and narrow. Up. Then upon a summer's night. Uh, you don't then upon a summer's night. Yes. You gently change my life. I would never be the same. Okay. Now you see you put too much stress on the. Do you hear that? That, that, and that's where every word has a value, but some have more than others, and individual, you know, little individual words, some don't have a lot, like the, okay. right? So there, Less. you you were doing melody, but there there's the time, that's the art of phrasing, where you can pull a little more onto one note, pull a little off another one that's not as important, okay. right? Sure. Keep going, I'm going to move. Go on. Yeah. Till you came into my life. Dog that you love, but I gotta feel it. <laughs> Till you came into my life. Till you yes. came into my life. When you when you sing with your core connected emotionally, it starts right out the gate with an emotion on it. Right? Wow. You heard it, right? Yeah. That's right the till. Yeah. It started right with emotion. Bring emotion first, right? Be okay. ready with that emotion. Okay, one more time, go on. Till I think emotionally. Oh. Till you came into my life. Yeah. <laughs> Till I heard you call my name. My name? Oh. <laughs> Till I heard you no. call yeah. my 
jaw. Name. Remember, don't sing with your jaw. Okay. You know, you when you have those words that you feel the tendency to want to go down with the jaw to find that power there, yeah. push here and lift a little here. Yeah. Narrow and lift, but don't think from the jaw. I'm rereading the letters you wrote me. I'm searching and scanning for answers in every line for some kind of sign. And when you are mine, the world seems to burn. It's for how low you sing. It's how are you affecting your audience. It's all that matters um, because you you can go and you know the greatest people are out there and to sit through an entire concert of twenty something songs but they're never really connected or making you feel emotional doesn't matter how good they sing if that's not happening we don't listen to music uh, in a sterile environment we want we listen to it because we want emotion that's really the purpose of emotion right and you're really good at that <laughs> oh thank you okay. so no. Yeah. Get, get a bigger exhale. Get all that old air out. So the more air you can get out, the more your lungs want to help you because they want to get the air back. So get out. Okay. This hand feels like it's not doing anything. You're putting it there like a prop. <laughs> so put your fingers in. Where's your diaphragm? Right. Right. It's at the bottom of your ribs, right in the middle, right where your stomach is. So press that. Right? Okay. Press it while you're breathing and press it while you say each word. Shh. Get out! Now there you're just thinking of that, but <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to break down the Too and everyone, things. believe me, everybody goes to this. One more time. Break it down slowly. Shh. Slow everything down. Shh. Get out! There, so you're still doing it from here. Yes. So that's why you're not emotionally into your core. That's that's the one thing that you need to find because that that brings all that power into that naturalistic thing that you have to begin with mm -hmm. into your natural musicality. You're still trying to create tone because you're worried about what they're going to hear. So mm -hmm. yes, relax. Mm -hmm. Do some <sighs> exhales. Keep the air out. <sighs> it's actually the exhale part you can't do when you're nervous. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> Take breaths between each one. Don't even worry about singing a whole lot. So you were once my one. Okay, let's break them up. <clears throat> you were once my one. Take, take time between. Exhale. Finish the one. Exhale your air out. Then take another one. My one companion. Good. Now relax. Exhales perfectly. Now you get to inhale a little more. <laughs> good. And well, that's the hard part. You feel tight, right? So just your exhale's good. Now just really work. See how long and slow you can take it inhale. A lot more there, right? Yeah. So wait. Breathe again because when we wait, we get tense. Okay. off your voice that line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You hear that? The you feel off my face too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 tone. When I worked in the mill, weaving at the loom, I gaze absent-minded at the room, and half the time the shuttle because you've been doing that for years, but I would just say keep building those muscles back up because they will actually help you with your head voice. Okay, right? Because sometimes it helps to, even if you're not gonna go into your belt, if you think you're going to go into your belt, 
because it just brings a little of those belt muscles into play to help you hold that mm -hmm. that that part that you know because right around the break that's where it wants to mm -hmm. you know our break is like b flat c that right, right around exactly. there is where your voice wants to break naturally so and then press each okay no no Na, na, na. Start it as if you're going to belt it a little bit with that kind of strength you'd have in your core. Oh, okay. You're going to belt. No, there you did belt it actually. Na, 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 but you want me to belt it? You're in your head voice, but okay, you've got yes, the same strength in your core as if you're going to belt it. Na, na, na. Okay, but you didn't breathe between. So you got to breathe. So, and never, never. That much. <laughs> that dramatic of a breath. Never, never to okay, so the two, and now this is, the note before the high note is more important. That's the one people tend to throw away because they're also worried about the high, the high note. Mm -hmm. But you gotta sing the low note as if it's that high with that much strength and in the same placement as you're gonna be having the high note. So the dino feels like a release. Okay. Right? So two, it should be feeling like the no. And that's why you want that always internal uh. So two, two, I need to push on that two, two, no. And don't change anything. Two, watch. Two, no. Very little movement, right? Right. Try that. Two, two, no. Yeah, but you need air. <laughs> And I am extremely, extremely nervous because I have no formal training. That's okay. So. And your personality. It becomes. almost felt like when we did when we did this, it wasn't quite in the right key that I was used to. But no, that's but okay. I, what I'm saying is, you could sing in any key. And really? You could sing high and high. And high. But, but, what, but what I'm saying is, you, you can hit ranges. Again, I think I, I do that. I'm blessed with a very low Yeah, range. and yes. learn the head voice. The head voice is a learned way of singing. Speaking and belting is natural, you know, to us. <coughs> um, but we learn a placement and how to, oh, you know. Yes. Um, but where your natural speaking voice sits, mm -hmm. that yeah, speaking voice. But, I can do but it yeah. tells you where your natural, like you know, yes. look. Um, Karen Carpenter had one of the most beautiful voices mm -hmm. ever in the world, and you know, <laughs> we waited for her to go low. <laughs> you know, low is good. But I'm just saying, pick. You could sing a variety of things, mm -hmm. but when you pick certain types of songs, don't think, oh, if I'm not singing it in this key, that means I'm not as good. Okay. No, no, no. Pick the key that works for you, sure. where your warmth is and where your emotion can find the mm -hmm. most room. Mm -hmm so that your song can be the most effective. Yeah. And then making sure during the breath you're prepping your thought, mm -hmm. you know, what are you trying to tell us? And that's the other thing. Let's just talk a little bit about, um, you phrased very well. We can always phrase better, right? Phrasing is a combination of knowing when to let the lyric 
be the star of the show and knowing when to let the melody carry it. Because not every song is written <clears throat> perfectly. There are some. The lyrics are just dead on, you know, and you could get the worst singer there in the world and they could sing these lyrics and it would still come across. But I work with writers, I've written songs myself. I know sometimes like the first verse, you can fit it in perfect because it was your first idea and then the second verse you gotta write it and it's not quite fitting exactly, just perfectly the vowels and the consonants, you know, exactly where you want uh, the syllables of the word to be. So then that's when the singer has to come in and help the song a little bit. Um, so you can push and pull according to, mm -hmm. this is well written of course. This song of But course. the other thing is that nothing can be straight line, right? A held note can't be a straight line. It has to go somewhere. Every note has to have an arc. Every verse, every line has to have an arc. Every verse has an arc. Every chorus, the entire song has an arc. It's all going somewhere. And you have to know what that path is. Mm -hmm. We'll do stop and start. What will happen to you if you're not allowed to use your hands? <laughs> I'm half Italian. It doesn't work. <laughs> you see, you have a, but what can happen, though, is you can get a, a physical connection with your hands to your voice. And you can actually then be thinking that is part of your singing mechanism. And then maybe not be using as much strength from somewhere else as you could be. Just in a thought, but let's go back to the piano. All right. And hold on to that piano. Don't All take right. your hands off that piano. I'm gonna oh. slap you. <laughs> <laughs> first you okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you feel the piano and okay. make sure you're aware of the weight of this piano the whole time. Okay? All right. And also the weight into your feet. Okay. And then when you sing, I want you to really again focus here. Sure. Okay. Day by day, I'm feeling more in love with you. But now you can still have the rhythm, right? See, yeah. Your hands, you had rhythm when you felt you yeah. could dance. You got to be able to dance with your singing. Okay. Right? Day by day. Mm -hmm. You can use your head okay. a little bit, but you know, to find your, the beat, whatever you want to help you keep the beat. Sure. But the voice has to, to dance a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Okay. okay. Day by day, I'm feeling more in love you with you. Yeah. And day by day, okay. my Let's talk about that low part. Uh, okay. Imagine that low is a high note, yeah. and it was hard to reach. Okay. What would that feel like? Day by day. Yeah. It's easier to hit, right? Yeah. Put a little. Yeah. Camera. Yeah. If you think of thinking. Don't, I think people, when they think of going low, we all go, oh, they think, oh, like now we gotta help ourselves and get the low note, right? This. Instead, just use your string, and like you did, right there, it was great. Yeah. To my devotion. Okay, well, that's an example there of where it has to go somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So what are you gonna, you gotta do something while you're holding that devotion, the shun part of it? You either, you gotta build it, or your decrescendo, you I gotta I wish I had a natural vibrato, but I don't really. But you don't, you can squeeze. You just yeah. hold it. What, just that, what's that note? A B. Okay, so just sing devotion and get on the note, and then I want you to, as you're holding the note, take a good breath so you do it. And, and as you're holding the note, I want you to start to squeeze, not just here, but your ribs, everything, up okay. to the sides of your neck as you're holding the note. Right. Devotion. You see, it changes, and you can use your body to help do something, right? Emotionally. Yeah. Now, now think of something emotional while you do it. <laughs> day by day, I'm feeling more in love with you. And day by day, I want you to know. Oh my gosh, we gotta get out of here. You, you feel the muscles you had to use to do that? Yeah. You gotta use those when you sing. Okay. And Are you from Minnesota? Yeah. Right. Rochester? Rochester, yeah. Brainerd. Oh. Cool. <laughs> uh, for you, I think what would be good is to build that whole oh, very covered. Get those. We don't want to be, oh, that's like the ugliest soprano song. We don't want that. We never want that. But 
being able to do that helps you build up those muscles so that you can add a little of that in when you need it, right? And help pull your voice, make it bigger, make more space. I want you to take a breath and then go, and then just let a little pop of sound follow it. Can you try that? Not easy, right? No. Okay, do it again. Let's really hear the air, like. <laughs> really? <laughs> that would be, uh, yeah. <laughs> the goal is to be able to go <laughs> all the way up and down in that very covered, big, wide way. Mm -hmm. So you, you strengthen those muscles. Yeah. And the reason for that is because you know, right now you're singing small, like it's pretty, but it's small, right? Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make a space for that sound wave to be born and we don't want to squash it you know we don't want to, when we push our voice toward our mask we're squashing it down when we go this way with our voice we're squashing it killing the baby you know <laughs> you want always to think of it i was i talk about it like this is the ballroom where we make our big tone and then this is the parlor where we let we shape a little bit and we let the last of the sound out but we again always thinking of that internal uh, sound so let's try the song uh, a little higher, acapella. I mean, we can I do it acapella. Or can you play it? Well, do you want her to do? I pull. Which very... Oh, from. Uh, have you sung that? She knows it. She's standing here doing it. You can sit on my bed. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Could have died. Oh, okay. actually afraid to let people hear you breathe yeah right yes yes you can't be okay and you're afraid a lot of people are afraid to do whatever they got to do to their face they know it's gonna look so bad but it, they're embarrassed right but you have to use your face you have to overdo it right now don't worry about until don't you worry get about so strong okay. that you can do it more internally and you don't have to oh, make those faces but you got to strengthen it okay so don't be don't pay any attention breathe breathe Let's hear you breathe. Let's see you breathe, and then you make sure you're using your core. Keep your fingers here when you're when you're singing. You have to think. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. That's how much energy I want you to feel like. Yeah, like your face, because believe it or not, when you you your emotion right there, you yeah. you felt a little bit uh, laughing a little bit, and all, already your muscles started to fire up. You gotta you gotta do that and for real, right? So I can tickle you or poke you or do something, but you have to try to, okay. right? That very first breath. Think, think of the excitement of, ah, this is just exciting at this point of the song, right? Yeah. So think of that. Get yourself revved up. Okay. Get your, I see, I just gave myself goosebumps. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and you can if you fake your muscles into thinking something amazing is going to happen. All right. Okay. Oh, you just, you're, because you jumped into it. Yes, what do we wait, give yourself the time. Go. Actually, actually do this. Go. Right. Pump yourself up. Squeeze. Squeeze your core. Squeeze your arms. Squeeze yeah. your core. <laughs> feel this part of your, feel your chest yes. muscles. Okay. You know, the sides of your ribs. Feel them get, how would you feel if you're a kid at Christmas? Oh my gosh, you know, whatever. It's that kind of a feeling, right? Where you're really using your whole body emotionally, right? Okay. So. Nope, but don't, and don't do go. it and then wait. So take a Just big take breath and go. go right into it. But go. make sure you got that breath. <laughs> no, we don't believe you. Come on. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. I look at me. You know the words. 
right? So you just sing this, just sing. We're gonna sing, I only know that right. when he began to dance with me. That's right, okay. So it's, I only know when he began to dance with me. That's all we're it. gonna sing. All right, so look at me, ready? Okay. I only know, I only know. Now do also here, feel it, each pump here. I only know. Feel the difference when you're supporting it? I think so. Can I do it again? I only know. Yeah, but that's not with them too much air. You gotta get a bigger breath. So you get a bigger breath and do the same thing. I only know. So it's it, it, see, it's in, it, it, what's what's holding you back is really your shyness and your inhibitions. Yeah. You're afraid mm -hmm. to use your body and breathe. Yeah. So that's what your goal is, right? To it's really gonna just like with him, you, you improve. Remember, fifty percent of your singing is your breathing. Okay. Because your voice is there. It really is there. So you need to work on getting that soft palate up, creating more space, pulling the voice back a little more to the middle, and fueling it with lots more air, right? And don't don't uh, be inhibited by. You're probably not at home. You probably are just singing like crazy at home, right? I do. It drives my husband crazy. <laughs> well, I want to hear that. It drives him crazy. So, like, whenever I do theater, well, when I did it 20 years ago. Um, the nerves were never there because I got well prepared and well rehearsed situations like this. But or where, where are you besides this? Oh, like an audition? Well, that's yeah. just auditions are hell. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Situations like this is like, yeah. getting, like when you say breathing, and I think it's just getting in that mind frame to control that breathing to make it happen. Well, I don't know what to tell you to not be yeah. nervous in an audition. The only thing I can tell you is someone who's been on the other side of it because of being involved with theater people. Just go with whatever you do well. Don't worry about getting the part because the part is already kind of preordained in their minds what they're looking for. And if you don't fit the bill, it doesn't matter what you do. Yeah. So yeah. just figure out what you sing well and you feel the most comfortable and confident doing. Yeah. And just keep doing that until you feel, fit the right slot that they're looking for. What do you think, buddy? Hmm? What do you think? I know you hate the rest. <laughs> He's terrible. He absolutely hates the vet. Makes him so nervous. Is that because of the time you swallowed that stick? Hmm? Shadow hates the vet. Yeah. Probably because of the time that he ate a stick when he was a puppy and it got stuck with <laughs> trying to get out. And the last part of the journey, let's say it got stuck and it caused him extreme pain. So I brought him right away to my vet and they x-rayed him, of course. Got, well, they got the stick out without any damage. But in the process, they discovered he had a stomach full of rocks. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about you. <laughs> I'm talking about you. So, Mom, get me out of here. I don't like this place. And my vet told me to feed him mashed potatoes. So yes, that is the trick. Believe it or not, dogs cannot digest potatoes. So if you have a dog that likes to eat rocks and things it shouldn't, feed it mashed potatoes and it it just wraps around whatever's in there and takes it right out. It might save you a trip to the vet, which we all know is very expensive. So tip for the day. You waiting for the doctor? Hmm? Are you going to be a good boy because I don't have to put a muzzle on you? So there you go, folks. This might seem a really odd intro and ending for a video on a masterclass, but hey, I'm stuck here. I have the time. When I get home, I have a million things to do, so I figured this would be the time to just do a little intro and outro. From everybody who participated in that masterclass, thank you so much. You were amazing, and it was, I hope that you all had as much fun as I did. You seem to. There was a lot of laughing that went on, and uh, I hope a lot of light bulb moments, and a lot of nodding, and people telling me, yeah, yeah, I get, I get it. I finally get it. You know, voice teaching is not easy. It, uh, it's not like other things where you could physically show somebody something. It's so internal and it's, even though you use your full body and you should be using your full body when you sing, a lot of it is tiny little things that go on inside. And so 
It's not easy to teach, but uh, you know, I've developed my own way of very organic way of teaching out of necessity. A way to try to explain it to people and I can't believe how many years it's been now that I've been teaching and I was so reluctant to try it in the first place. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you around for the next one. Cheers.